which way of working will dominate the future of work? So currently we have hybrid working and remote working, both vying for top spot. Now, this is a bit like two undefeated heavyweight boxers squaring up for the fight. In the red corner, we have hybrid working pacing fiercely, getting ready for a showdown. In the blue corner, we have remote working leading the ringside crowd in an ex exhilarating chant. So hybrid working versus remote working, who will win? Now, chances are, I think you already have a favorite in this fight. You may already be rooting for hybrid working. You might like the ability to get the best of both worlds. On the other hand, your heart may be set on remote working. You know, you're all for flexibility and autonomy. And interestingly, this is where most of the debate is. Most of the debates about ways of working is rooted in feelings, preferences, and biases of individuals. So in this video, I will try, and the keyword here is try. I will try to strip individual biases from the argument and present an objective take on hybrid versus remote work. So let's start with hybrid work. What are the benefits of hybrid work? So I'll start with an obvious one, flexibility and adaptability. So hybrid work combines the benefit of remote and in-office work. So this means you get flexibility to choose when and where you work. You choose when to work in the office, and you also choose when to work elsewhere. You have increased collaboration opportunities. That's number two, hybrid work can allow for face-to-face -face interactions and in-person collaboration. So you get to build stronger relationships. You increase team creativity and synergy. Uh, third point is cost optimization. So hybrid work allows companies to optimize office space. So you can reduce real estate costs while still maintaining a physical workspace for what is really essential. Another point is people satisfaction. So offering hybrid work can model and improve um, people's satisfaction. So you get a balance of the convenience of remote work and the benefits of in-person collaboration. So if we stick with hybrid work for a moment, what are the drawbacks of hybrid work? So one that I've seen a lot is coordination and scheduling challenges. So hybrid working requires very careful coordination and planning to ensure that team members can effectively collaborate and align their schedules for in-person meetings and activities. And now this can be a very big challenge for globally dispersed teams. Another point that you need to be aware of is communication gaps. So hybrid work can create a divide between remote and in-office employees. So this could lead to communication gaps and reduce cohesion within teams. Another challenge of hybrid work is increased complexity for leaders. So leading a hybrid team requires additional effort from leaders. They need to balance the preferences of people who work remotely, as well as those who prefer to work in the office. There's a potential for inequality. So if not managed properly, hybrid working arrangements can re result in perceived inequality. So some may feel that people in the office have more visibility and more opportunities for career advancement. So okay, now let's turn our attention to remote working. So what are the benefits of remote working? So I'll start with what I think is probably an obvious one as well, increased productivity. So remote working can provide you with a more flexible and comfortable environment. So potentially leading to increased productivity and focus. Another one we love you go for is cost savings. So working remotely can save you commuting costs, meals, and all those work-related expenses. It's also a benefit for individuals as well as the company. Um, another one that's good for remote working is expanded talent pool. So remote working allows companies to access a broader talent pool. You can hire individuals from different locations. Remote workers also get the opportunity to work with people from a broader talent pool. Improved work-life balance is another big deal. So remote workers, remote working offers the opportunity for better work-life balance. You have more control over your schedule. You get to better allocate time for personal commitments. So now I think those are some, I think, compelling benefits. So what are the drawbacks of remote working? So I think the top one is communication challenges. Remote working can lead to communication gaps as face-to-face -face interactions may become limited. So this can impact collaboration, teamwork, information sharing, just generally across the organization within team members. You have reduced social interaction as well. So remote working can result in feelings of isolation and reduced social interaction, and this can impact morale and engagement. Remote working can blur work-life boundaries. 
The working from home can blur the boundaries between what you do at work and what you do in your personal life. So this can lead to longer working hours, difficulties in disconnecting fully from work. Another challenge is the potential technology and infrastructure issues. So remote working requires reliable tech and internet access. Any technical glitches, connectivity problems can completely disrupt productivity and cause a lot of frustration. So now we've looked at both hybrid working and remote working. So who will win? <laughs> Which way of working will dominate the future of work? The truth is, it depends. The future of work and the context of the team will determine the way of working that is best. The real challenge for leaders is to avoid having a favorite way of working. The question, the question is, can we figure out the best way of working for a particular team and implement that regardless of personal preferences? Can leaders and organizations let go of biases and adapt to meet the challenges they will face in the future? That is the real question.